looking at different kinds of accounts and identifying what beautiful financial statement they're on and what type of account it is. And if I understand what type of account it is, then I can also figure out from a cash flow standpoint what kind of activity it is, whether it's operating, investing, or financing. So let's take a look at capital stock. Capital stock can also be called common stock, which is one type, or preferred stock. But capital stock is the overarching uh, category for all kinds of stock. Now you're saying, what's stock? That's what a corporation gives its investors when the investors give the corporation cash or other resources to run the business. So capital stock is evidence of ownership by investors in the business. Capital stock is part of stockholders' equity. Because it's from external owners, it's part of what we call CC, or contributed capital, contributed resources, contributed capital. When we see changes in the capital stock account, from a cash flow standpoint, it's part of a financing activity. And did I tell you what beautiful financial statement it's on? No, I forgot. So it's on the balance sheet. So capital stock, you find on the balance sheet. If I did a statement of stockholders' equity, you would also find it on the statement of stockholders' equity. So it can be definitely on the balance sheet, and maybe if the company does a statement of stockholders' equity, on it. Paid-in capital is kind of a sister account to capital stock. Paid-in capital is when investors pay more than what is printed on that stock certificate. So they paid in additional capital above and beyond the, what's printed on the certificate or the value of the certificate. So in an IPO, an initial public offering, when stock is sell to the, sold to the public, the capital stock or the preferred or common stock may have a value of a penny, but the market forces have determined that they sell the stock for, say, $100. Well, that means the investors paid in a lot more capital than the penny that's on the stock certificate. And so it's called additional paid-in capital. So it is stockholders' equity. It's also contributed capital because, remember, it comes from external um, investors. And it's thus on the balance sheet. And if we do a statement of stockholders' equity, yeah, it'd be on that too. And because it's a stockholders' equity account, it's a financing activity. Bonds payable. Bonds payable is a long-term liability. If you know anything about bonds, like savings bonds or uh, corporate bonds, they're of a certain amount. They pay interest, uh, generally on a quarterly, semi-annual, or annual basis. And when those bonds mature, those the investor gets back not only uh, they get their principal back, but they also are getting interest payments along the way. So bonds payable is a liability, a promise to repay in the future their bondholders. So um, and because those bonds usually last longer than a year, usually like 10, 20, 30, 50 year bonds, they're long term. Uh, because they're a long-term liability, they would be on the right balance sheet. And because they're a long-term liability, they're in the financing section of the cash flow statement. Let's take a look briefly at land. Land is a property, plant, and equipment. And it's property, plant, and equipment because it's being used productively in the business to generate revenues uh, and so PP&E, uh, because that's an asset account, the assets show up on the balance sheet, and because it's a non-current asset, it is an investing activity on the statement of cash flows. Now let's look at that versus land held for investment. Land held for investment means I'm not productively using the land to generate revenue, I'm holding it. So it's an investment, not property, plant, and equipment. 
it's on the balance sheet, and it's still an investing activity. So let's stop here, and I'll talk about building and accumulated depreciation on the next one.